Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to your second Ranking the Album show here today on Sunday afternoon. Along in the Coke Captain's chair today, we've got Mr. Rick Labonte, who is living it up with the success yes, of his uh, brand new solo album, double album. Uh, if you haven't heard it, please check it out. RickLabonte.com. It's a great one. Uh, but today we're going to talk all about a fantastic Norwegian band that we have hinted at from time to time here on the channel we haven't really done any show specifically on them although we've uh, i've reviewed various bunch of their albums here on the channel and on the webzine but today we're going to rank the five studio albums from magic pie a tremendous band right rick i mean whew. oh amazing they're one of my favorite uh, progressive rock bands of the 21st century uh they really earned that title because uh they're just fantastic and I yeah. love their. I mean, a, a band that pretty much does it all. They're pretty. They're pretty heavy. You know, they're. I would say out of a lot of the, you know, newer prog bands, uh, these def these guys definitely rock quite a bit. They their vocal harmonies and melodies are spectacular. Every album to me, on a scale of zero to five, are a four point five or a five star. Easy. Agreed which makes doing this ranking pretty damn hard. I mean, I, I was like I was saying to Rick before, you could take all the albums and just kind of throw them up in the air and however they land, that's pretty much, you know, you can go with that. Although the more I thought about it, like when I was kind of redoing my list this morning uh, and fine tuning it, I think there's one that I like a little bit less than the other four, but it ain't by much. And mm -hmm. uh, before we, before I forget, uh, I'm just going to give you, and I'm probably going to butcher some of these names. I want to, I'll tell you who is in the band today. Um, so we got Kim Stenberg, founding member on guitars and vocals. Uh, Eirik Hansen on vocals and guitar. Uh, oh boy. Eirikur Hawkson. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm totally miss blowing these here on vocals, guitar and keyboards. Lars uh, Peter Holstadt on bass and vocals. Erling Henniger on keyboards and Martin Utby on drums. And as, as you see, most of the band does sing. And if you've never heard Magic Pie's music, man, the sweet vocal harmonies are all over the place. Virtuoso guitar work, heavy riffs, blistering solos, tons of Hammond organ. And for yes. all of you who always remark on how my eyes light up whenever I talk about Hammond organ, yes. Uh, Hammond organ, Moog synthesizer, Mellotron, piano electric piano uh yeah just a great band really great drum work uh, yeah awesome band five albums we're gonna rank them i'm gonna have rick kick us off with his number five sure and just to piggyback on that uh for those who never heard to him all the things that you said is absolutely true it gives you the greatest hits of the early prog symphonic rock right up to the modern time they do justice of uh with that hard rock uh, uh blending but everything that you like about yes and genesis kansas dream theater uh but they're not copying anybody they're not cloned but they give you that inspiration inspiration of all those bands that we love uh, in their own unique style. They can be fast at time, technical at time, and then there's just so much ear candy moment from the vocals or the, the music. But what I like about this, that there, there's a balance between being busy and making a good song. They do it in such a way. So if you're starting to listen and say, hey, I like the tune, don't, don't be quickly to think that this is where it's gonna be because the song has changed in a minute and I'm changed again and again and it's a very good songwriting uh, and that's what I like about it it's very adventurous melodic tasty moody and even though some songs are seem long in, t in terms of length you don't feel that way because the song is moving so much and that's why I had a hard time uh, ranking this I mean I got my I feel comfortable what I say today but it could change as one album grow a little longer but you realize there are only five albums, right, from year 2000. So they don't put out an album every year. But it's so much on each album uh, that it's a lot of work what they come up with. So I'm not surprised they take a few years between albums. Uh, but I like the fact that they don't just throw instrumental just to show off. It fits with the music. The ebb and flow is so important. Now, the name like Magic Pie. I was thinking, why did they call it Magic Pie? And you know what? In a way, it does describe me music. If we want to use, since you're Italian, 
a pizza pie. What we know about pizza pie, especially in Canada, we like our toppings, right? We have the Canadian, the Hawaiian, the Greek, whatever, meat lover pizza, whatever. But it's like one slice, if that was a song of the album, you take a bite, you're going to get a lot of different flavors by the time you hit to that crust. Same thing could be given by the song. Uh, even though this may be a whole pie when you listen to the album, each song has its unique flavors and new bite as you get into it. And that's how I thought a uh, pretty creative uh, band. And so I'm going to start with this one. Uh, I think uh, I don't think it's a weak album. I just that I've been listening to the other one. Now, when I came to this show, I was thinking right off the bat when me and you were kicking around an idea to rank in these albums, I thought it was just going to go probably going to be like the first album all the way to the next they progress. But that's not the case. As I started listening, some of these albums just jump out because um, they left me with that that good feeling that, wow, that was awesome. Like, was, like that was a great pizza, right? Or that was a, I'm full and I'm feeling great. So, uh, again, just because it's last doesn't mean it's a weak album. It's just, I got to rank it in some way. And I'm going to go with uh, the suffering joy for the for my number five. Uh, I like it. I think it's one of the better album covers. It reminds me of the um, that hypnosis uh, kind of work. Um, and uh, and I, I really like it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I think it's a great uh, album. And it starts off with the, the big epic 24 minutes of life work. And they break it all down. But they, they really basically have a... Um, nine tunes and and it's a full album and there's some long ones some short ones but need, not, nevertheless it's a good lesson and and if this was your starting place um you won't be disappointed but i think there's other albums that if i were to give uh, a recommendation there'd be other ones i would offer but i really like this record don't get me wrong it's just that by the time you know the band they're not surprising me. There's so many wow factors in every album that you kind of already understand what they're about, right? Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I don't think any Magic Pie album is going to give you any major surprises. That's right. You, you're going to expect excellence. You're going to get excellence. You're going to get the big vocal harmonies. You're going to get the massive keyboards and the big crunchy riffs and crazy solos and 20 minute long songs and 15 minute long songs. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. And, and so far they have not disappointed. And I would, you know, we talk, Christ, we talk about it on the, in the proxy quite a bit, you know, there are a number of bands from the more recent wave of Prague who love to write epic tracks and not all of them do it well. This band does them really well. So I, I'll be definitely talking about that a bit today. Uh, my first one and number five, uh, it, it just comes down to, I, I like this one the least, but I still really like it a lot. And it happens to me the most recent one. So maybe I just don't have enough time with it yet. Um, it's uh, Fragments of the Fifth Element from 2019. It's a slightly shorter album than the others. Uh, they, they seem to be trying a little bit different stuff on this album, a little bit, but it still contains all the stuff you know, we really want to hear from the band, all the big epic parts, all the big vocals. Uh, I love the, uh, the opener, The Man Who Had It All, terrific song kind of a shorter song uh you get uh, pnc which is kind of melodic good mix of prog and fusion on there too because these guys are can do that they can do fusion they can do hard rock they can do prog they kind of do it all uh you got the touch by an angel which is a really interesting song it's kind of mellow it's kind of bluesy not not Ooh. something we'd ever heard from them before that's right uh, very emotional vocals different i like it i don't love it um, again, not really what I want to hear from them, but it's I, I appreciate them wanting to do something a little bit differently. Uh, and then you got Table for Two, which is a quirky little prog song. And then, it, you know, 22 minutes and change, about 23 minutes, The Hedonist, which is the big epic at the end of the album. It's a total throwback to, you know, what they do really, really well. Uh, hard rock and prog, got loads of, uh, you know, Hammond organ and synthesizers and blazing guitars the big soaring vocal harmonies never gets boring that's what's great about this band they do these big right. romantic tracks they don't bore you at all not that's at all right. uh and i for me this is to me their first not quite perfect album this is the only album that there's that i ever gave a 4.5 out of 5 all the others are five stars but i still okay. 4.5 out of 5 is great right 
So it's still mandatory listening. I just think I like the others a little bit more. So that's my number five. And that comes to my number four. I picked that one. And the reason why I think it's a, a champion over Suffer and Joy is not because it was um, because uh, that album was powerful, but I had this the longest. This was because you're the one that turned me on to this band. And one of your, uh, I don't know if it's what new on Sequenquility or if it was uh, just a review, but I remember never heard in Magic Pie and it was on your channel. So I said, okay, I love everything you recommended in the past. So I went on blind faith, not hearing a single note. Peter Pido said it's good. It's good enough for me. You and I are always on the same orbit when it comes to love and music. So I just went and went blind faith and ordered it. And, uh, and because I had it the longest, I know it inside and out now. And so it, it championed over the last one, not because it's probably, like you're right, this is a little different compared to what we know. Uh, but I just thought, wow, what an introduction to a band. If you never heard this band before, there's definitely a lot of magic in this pie. Uh, and I really dig it. And I think it's more of a personal thing that because if it wasn't for this album, I wouldn't have went backwards. And right. if it wasn't for this channel, I wouldn't even know these guys existed. So uh, thank you for that. But yeah, that's why this is number four for me. Uh, um, because in the ranking, I do fun have a big fun of this being new discovery for me, you know, because, you know, when you got an album collections like we do, and it's nice when somebody can totally rock your world with all these surprises. And like I said, be original at it, though. I felt like I had the greatest of, you know, those bands that we were just talking about that we love. And uh, so that's why that's a little higher because it's my very first introduction to Magic Pie. Uh, job well done by me then i guess right yes, so. you did thank you very much <laughs> and thank you for including me in this uh, ranking because i'm glad to be a part of it you got it hey that, that, that's cool that i was able to turn you on to a new band and here we are doing the ranking a couple of years later right on. So, yes not too bad as we get to for the viewers no i've been on a viewer for five years now wow right? very cool very so, cool. Right we've on. been on for this is year number eight actually but it'll be eight years in september but yeah okay yeah. cool yeah. So I've been on, on board the Magic Pie train from the very beginning. And, uh, you know, originally, and it always happens, right? Sometimes, you know, the first album you get from a band, oftentimes, if it's a really good one, that sticks with you. And even though you may love a lot of their catalog and been, been a fan for years and years and years, sometimes you always go back to that first one. Uh, I kind of thought when I was sitting down to do this, that that would be the case for me. And it very well could be because I think my number four, three, two, and one are all equally amazing albums. And just today, I'm just going to rank Motions of Desire, their debut from 2005 is my number four. Could be my number one, could be my number two. I, you know, it's great. And this, I think every Magic Pie album in the year that it came out made my top 10 of the year and probably top five i have to go back and look but i know every time they release an album it's it's at the top of my list and i believe if memory serves correctly motions of desire won our readers poll for album of the year in 2005 on sea tranquility.org so that that for a debut album that means something uh you know you listen to this the influences are all over the place. You know, Rick mentioned a bunch of them before, you know, Deep Purple, Uriah Heat, Kansas, Spock's Beard, Magellan, yes, Genesis, Dream Theater, Flower Kings, you know, on and on and on. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't sound like any of those bands, right? You hear elements, you know that they grew up on these bands or that they were influenced by the, these, you know, some of their uh, contemporaries, but they're doing their own thing. The songs are so memorable. They're so well played. You know, you've got the 20 minute heavy prog epic change starts things off here amazing killer hooks and harmonies all over the place the title track is just absolutely soaring melodic early 90s style neo prog kind of reminds me of some of the british bands from that time uh you got the 14 minute full circle poetry which is great mm -hmm. without knowing why and then of course the three-part illusion and reality which is just absolutely terrific uh mind-blowing guitar and keyboard solos on there just like i said an amazing debut could rank higher you know, it's the apple already being eaten there. But uh, yeah, just this this was this was a game changer for me when this came out. 
this to me was one is has been one of the best new bands to show up in the 2000s really, wow, really right on. amazing well, <laughs> and so different from you know you look at uh uh i'm drawing a blank now the other band from norway jesus that i talk about all the time on the channel Cloud wobbler. King. wobbler oh wobbler yes yeah, so why you know you have two amazing norwegian bands that came out right around the same time period released about the same amount of albums they only have a handful of albums but they're so different from each other you know it's amazing how you have two bands from the same area releasing albums at the exact same time and you, I mean, Magic Pie and Wobbler are completely different, but they're both so, so amazing. So. Right on. Well, I'm not like, I wish they, okay, the music is so creative. They could have, I thought the album cover is pretty bland uh, in that aspect. I mean, and Beatles, Apple, that's the first thing I thought of, you know, the, uh, the EMI recording or what. But um, this is my number three. three is motion of desire uh, i think it's great i mean being in the top three is not a, a a negative thing at all i do love the i do this love this record and to me it's an ear con candy moment from the moment you start and being a first album uh you know they always say that some of the best work of some of the band because they had a whole lifetime of writing song is on that first record but it goes to show you because it's their number three that they still continue to write great out uh great album it uh and uh and one thing also um they're not a one-trick pony uh they have so many different angles to their music and having those multiple singers make it so easy to listen for the um that variety into it and man can they sing so what a what a first album i mean if i put out something like that i'd be so proud and to know that they even i think they even wrote better album die for that but what a way a great way to start a career i yeah. think yeah I, I would agree and i also would agree their album covers are not very good that's the only thing about their albums <laughs> yeah. that i don't like their covers are generally not very good yeah where's the magic on the cover the magic i don't know oh. yeah i'm looking at most of them here and they're they're all pretty lackluster it's yes just, a couple of them are not good at all but yeah but the music is just spectacular yeah that's right i mean that's why you can't judge a book by a cover or yeah, an album yeah. cover by its cover you absolutely can't yeah all right my number three which i think is probably the best album cover of all of them and it's not great either but uh is the suffering joy from 2011 yeah that and is the best cover. yeah I mean, you know because this this cover looks like a lot of stuff that i mean it, this was on uh, progress records but this looks like you know what you would see on inside out right or yeah uh, you know that sort of thing whereas some of the other ones are kind of cheap looking but uh i like this a lot third album you got some lineup changes here they've had a fair amount of lineup changes but man they don't miss a trick at all uh it kicks off with uh, the 24 minute multi-suite a uh, life's work track four-part epic Wait. just you know freaking dream theater heaviness Spock's beard, complexity, and vocal hooks. I mean, it's just a uh, little bit of like, uh, I hear a little bit on this track of like Todd Rundgren's Utopia, like the first album, very mm -hmm. first Utopia album. Um, unbelievable keyboards and guitar work on this. Vocal harmonies everywhere. The new singer, uh, Ira Kaur, who's still with the band, just doing a great job on this first album with the band. Uh, Headlines is a great track. It's like 10 minutes long. Good symphonic kind of Flower Kings kind of feel on that. They, they, you yeah. hear the Flower Kings from time to time. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. And, um, and I think, yeah, I think that's where I, uh, why it fit number five for me, only because it was too familiar to me of the Flower King, because I have every Flower King, where those other songs were more original to me, I felt. Yeah. But yeah, that's, but they're great album. I, I got, again, whatever you pick, I wouldn't lose sleep over because they're all awesome records. Yeah, and they I, are. I mean, it's, I, I don't know, I, I do like this one quite a bit. I mean, Slightly Mad is good because I'm a big heap and deep purple fan and i think they are too and it comes through on that and then you got that song tired which is like 15 minutes you know that's yeah, really good stuff i mean again all these albums are really really strong so the it's, it's almost like does does it really matter where they finish out i don't know but you know people are going to ask in the comments be like well which one should i get first like, i don't know get our number one i don't know get any of them it doesn't matter whichever one you can find get them Just get them all exactly. Why them? i love cool. that you brought up the uh the heat part, because the harmonies do sound like Ken Hensley and, B and David That's Byron. Yeah. There's a lot of great uh, moments where their voices are so close, like Hensley and Byron can sound like each other if they want in a lot of their songs. And just to be one step up uh, or a third of that vocal uh, approach. And I heard a lot of that. And I think that's what made 
it, me like it even more because it was like I said, it was a, a sense of familiar, familiar stuff in here, but it is still original at the same time. Yeah, I think if you're someone who likes the the kind of multi part vocal harmony bands again, like a Uriah Heap, like a Spock's Beard, uh, you know that sort of thing where you're hearing you know multiple guys in the band on there they layer it really well and plus the hooks are incredible you're gonna love this band it's gonna love yeah. this band. that's right that's right and it's a roller coaster ride of music i mean you start off one tempo and it's going everywhere but yeah. you just don't realize they did all that because they do it in such a very creative uh way and that comes to in my next pick um new to the the ranking that nobody we haven't mentioned yet i like this um to me it's a good concept like album in a way because the way they open up i'm talking about uh circus of life is my number two um just the way you hear the kids in the background and it's setting the scene like it's some carnival or a circus but man i really love that acoustic passage and welcome and the vocal what a way to like if you're watching it like a theater you know, you can picture the way the curtains open up, here's the singer start them, and you're getting an epic opera of some sort because it felt like um and like an experience when you were listening to the whole album. But the Circus of Life has a uh, five part for those who don't know, Welcome, Freak Show, What If, Trick of the Mind and the Clown and the Clown, which ebb and flow so fluidly, like you forty five minutes. <laughs> forty five minutes. But I mean, who would have the balls to do a 45 minute opening title track to an album? Nobody. And and your second album, too. Like, that's amazing. Usually you get a resume. That's right. It's your second album before you do something like that. Yeah. And then they got the Pointless Masquerade and the Washing the Waters. I mean, it's a great record. I guess they did something similar to me. They, They went and got someone's artwork for their cover of their album and they painted it. But like, I'm not blown away about the artwork or nothing. No. I thought they could have had circus animals like the bungo in the jungle or something like that. If you're going to talk about circus of life, but I don't know. I think it's a great record. Um, and, uh, and anybody who uh, take the time to listen to it, you know, make an appointment with an album like this because you have to sit back and let the theater in your own mind go on and let the audio just take you that place. Cause that's something you can play in the background and get it. Cause there's so much going on. You gotta take it as a full diet. Yeah, I absolutely, I agree with everything you said. It's my number two as well. And I, <laughs> I just happened to open up the book and I wanna show people this, hopefully you can see it. If you're, if, you're a, if you're a prog fan and you like epics, right? I mean, mm-hmm. hopefully everybody can see that. So there, the, yep. the title track, The Circus of Life is a five part epic, but part four also has four acts to it so it's even broken down for it i mean who's doing shit like this right um it's just a massive massive composition and then the final two tracks are great too pointless masquerade and watching the waters and those are both like nine ten minutes long so yeah this is for a sophomore album a second album musically it's great i don't like the packaging on this at all uh i think it looks really kind of cheap and it doesn't portray the Childish compared. Yeah, I mean, I almost so mature. I almost would have rather they used this for the album cover, you know, which is yeah. shit, basically the full. Uh, good point. I don't know, but it, either way, it's not great. But the music is absolutely immense. Uh, mm-hmm. And here, here, here's the crazy thing: as great as this album is, this is like a perfectly perfect album, amazing modern prog album. Just goes to show you, because we obviously we both ranked our top two is the exact same. Yes. How amazing! The album at number one is because this is incredible it is and i'm talking my favorite vocal stuff uh a lot of that of the best work is on that record like some of the the high uh, the oh man I, yeah. i'm getting emotional to thinking of it um because if you until you listen to it you wouldn't relate to it but when you when the people hear the album that we're talking about they understand why we're making a big deal so obviously uh, King for the Day. Um, I think it's uh, a, a fantastic record and, and being number one, but it's also the most accessible uh, album. Right off the bat, it comes off with songs that some people, it could get airplayed today if they only knew that this band, especially the opening track, Trick of the uh, Trade, it's more accessible for those who are not 
uh, that are not in the prog rock like we are into the way that you can get into Flower Kings and Dream Theater and some of those really epic kind of bands. This is a good starting place for some people. Even though they do have a kick-ass 27-minute tune, uh, King for the Day, as an epic, because that would be something you, you have to do, because that's what they're known for. But all these songs are great. I, I don't, I, I, I'll give you a chance to uh, elaborate on your pick, and you know I got the same one. And it's no surprise, because great minds think alike, and we're very similar <laughs> a lot of things. But, um, but yeah, this album's fantastic, and you know, I'm okay with the album cover, but not really. I mean, they could have done something better, but at least we know what it's about. Got the crown there. Um, mm -hmm. And I got to also say what we didn't mention was lyrics. They're good lyrics uh, all through this record. I mean, it's one thing to make all this wonderful music but and craft their melodies the way they do in the harmony. But I, the lyrics are really good. And for being, um, you know, I don't think English is their first language. I don't, I don't hear the accent and everything like I hear it like uh, you know it's universal uh, it's not like some bands in the in the prog world you know for they're from a different country I don't get that with some of these moments uh, they, they sound like you know I don't know even the Beatles when you hear some of the Beatles songs you never knew they had an accent until you do their interviews but they're like that they sing so well that it could have been Americanized too it could have been something that a band today uh, put out trick of the trade it would be should be getting airway airplay I think in my mind oh catchy yeah, yeah and I'm so glad catchy. you mentioned the Beatles because in my notes I put down that there are some uh, there are some melodies and harmonies on this album that shows you that they're fans of the Fab Four because oh, uh, for sure yeah I mean yeah this this without a doubt Again, all these albums are great, but if you've never, ever heard Magic Pie before, this would be the one that I would say to start with. Yeah, it's our, number, it's our number one for a reason, because it gives you everything that's so great about them. And by this time, this is 2015, they released this, so they've been out releasing stuff for, for a decade. They completely have their shit together here. Not that they didn't on the previous couple albums, because they totally did, mm -hmm. but uh, there's something about this one that the songs are so infectious and so hummable. And yet there's all these big heavy riffs and blistering solos and Hammond organ and Mellotron and Moog. Yes. And it's just, you know, quirky arrangements, heavy songs, big epics, uh, you know, Beatles harmonies. You got dream theater muscle, complexity of, you know, I mean, I can go on and on here. I mean, all this, every track is great. Just, if you've never heard a lick of this band before, Go listen to Trick of the Trade immediately when you're done watching this video. Right on. That is one of my favorite songs by them. And it's a short one. It's only like, what, six six minutes or whatever? Short uh, for them. <laughs> for them. That's short for them. If you love that, then move on to some other stuff. But man, you know, Tears Gone Dry, The Silent Giant, the title track, King for a Day, is amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this whole album is just absolute perfection. Absolute perfection. And uh, yes, yeah, this is a great band. A really great band. I had the, I had the uh, amazing... Uh, I, I was able to see them live once. Oh, they, wow. They, yeah, they played at, uh, I don't know if they played at Nearfest or Rosfest. I saw them at one of those and they were so good. And I got to meet them and they were really, really nice guys. And uh, yeah, just uh, a great band. What I love about them so much is because I think deep down inside, they're, they're all fans of the same bands of music that I am. And yep. they've, they've basically modeled their band as if, all right, well, this is what we love. So we want to kind of do a band that takes all that and rolls it up, puts it in a blender and boom. All in a pie, all in a pie. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's basically yeah. it. That's yeah. basically it. And it's, so when I listen to this band, I get the warm and fuzzies for like all the other stuff that I love. And, and but, you know, you said it perfectly early on. It all comes down to the songs, right? Yes. The songs are so memorable, regardless of whether it's five minutes long or 45 minutes long. The songs are just you listen to them and you're humming, you're humming them. You're remembering that riff. You're like, it's awesome. You know? Yes. And, 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 and regardless of what you uh, of um, uh, instrument of some people's choice, you're going to get the guitar. You're going to get the keyboard. You're going to get fantastic drummer. If you're a vocalist, you're going to love it. There's so much in there. They don't leave one rock unturned they took advantage of every opportunity and I, yeah and i think if that was a band collective 
collectively, one person favorite Genesis, one favorite yes or Dream Theater, or whatever. They made sure all that input was in there. And you get it all sometimes in the same song, uh, all those people that were mentioning, you know. So anyway, great stuff. Uh, I'm glad that you agreed. Uh, King for the day. And for people out there, that is the right song to pick. Uh, like he said, trick for a trade is uh, of the trade is uh, the I would recommend that. And if that doesn't hook you in, um, try the next song. But I don't think that would take much. If you're into prog rock, you'll get into it. Yeah, I, yeah. If that one doesn't grab you, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there you have it. I'm ranking the five albums of Magic Pie from Norway, a really really killer band. Uh, for all of you folks who like uh, hard rock and prog, yeah, doesn't get much better. Does not get much better. So uh, check them out and let us know what you think. If you are already a fan of Magic Pie, please rank the albums as you like them down in the comments below. Uh, but again, if you're new to the band, go listen to them. Come back and report what you think. All right, give us your feedback. So uh, because we're going to be doing more stuff like this uh, in the weeks and months ahead, because you know we've we've covered a lot of the really really big bands that everybody knows about, but there's a lot of great bands who have come onto the scene over the last 20, 30 years that I think need our attention here. And uh, we're going to give it to them. So That's right. thank you for more. In fact, uh, we'll give it all away. We're going to be doing the Neil Morris band in the very near future, probably next weekend, I think. So, uh, and they also have only a handful of albums, but really, really great ones. So that ranking is going to be just as difficult. But Just uh, as difficult. Yeah. So that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Rick, I, I know I've been plugging your album a lot, but you want to you want to give us any uh, updates on, you know, feedback, sales? Yes. All that oh, um, first of all, it's an amazing uh, how, you know, this channel and all the connections I made uh, that I'm sending albums to Japan, Germany, Australia. It's one thing seeing it going in Canada and U US, uh, but to see it go around the world like it is, it's an amazing feeling. So I thank uh, you guys and Martin and all those for plugging it in. And I appreciate that you like it. I tell you, I was scared to send it to credit and uh, guys that put reviews like you do. You got skin in the game. It's a scary thing. So it's very uh, rewarding when you know that they like it and i know they're not doing it out of friendship they in sincerely en uh, enjoy the record and uh and what i like is that um i'm trying to keep up with all the orders uh through the uh the website so it's actually a fantastic news and seven songs been played locally and across mm -hmm. the country out of the album and it's only been a week old or so so uh yeah things are pretty good i appreciate it and uh thanks a lot for the positive feedback you got it I even see it's on it's on sale on the shelf at Rock Fantasy in Middletown, New York. Yes, and then now it's on the digital world too. It's out there, oh, uh, but the physical good. product is available uh, on my website, and Amazon will be taking that in the warehouse shortly. Very cool, good stuff. Check it out, folks, if you have not already, and uh, let us know what you think of Magic Pie. So uh, that's a wrap. Visit us on the web at www.seatrankquality.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the, all the damn time, time together, as always. Uh, for Rick Labonte, I am Pete Pardo. Uh, Magic Pie, that's your assignment. Go out and check them out, and uh, we'll see you real soon here on the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Take care. Peace.